Thanks for staying with us. Now, historically and presently in Nigeria and Africa, women are faced with a lot of problems of inequality. Researchers gathered data on 217 countries in 2016, and the study revealed that 23 years of most women's life were spent, guess what, cooking, cleaning, child care, and elderly parent care while men were not involved in these family care duties. Now, since the 19th century in Nigeria, women struggled against gender discrimination and gender-based violence. Women's movement became prominent in Nigeria because of the attempt made by some women to enhance equal rights and opportunities for women like men. Now, the culture of patriarchy and um, chauvinism deprived women of their rights and this led to the exploitation and marginalization of women in private and public public sectors this was written by shuri shuriola um, in 2017 now today we are asking what would governance feel like if we had more women in the seat of leadership that's our question for tonight. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 Because it's International Women's Day, we might just open the phone line on the second half of the show. <laughs> so keep watching. All right, so, um, I mean, let's break it down. Because um, they say, oh, women are this, women are that, women are that. But we've seen time and time again when women are given positions of leadership and all of that, there's always that difference. First of all, why is that so? Is it the, the nurturing spirit that we have naturally with us, within us as women, that makes it that there's always a different touch when a woman is in a position of leadership? Why is I, that so? I think it's a couple of things. Mm. So, um, for starters, women are a lot more... Um, calculating is not the word that I would use, but when a man sees an opportunity, if he's 50% ready, in his mind he's ready. Hmm. A woman literally needs to be like 99.9% yes. ready we're for, her, like yeah, for her to actually feel like she's she, qualified to take on that position. Then when we find ourselves in that position, you are constantly, I mean, we talk about imposter syndrome, but it's a real challenge for women. So you push yourself even more because even though you're there and you deserve it, something in the back of your mind keeps thinking, I'm going to get found out. I'm going to get found out. I need to do better. I need to be better. So we push ourselves. And then, yes, you then cap it off with that nurturing. Now, this is not 100% of women because I'm sure we all know <laughs> yeah. not all women. But most women are nurturing. Most women are able to not just be still be about results but also be about the journey to the results so it's about taking people along with you on the journey it's not just about you know men like to again this is not men bashing please but some men some men mm -hmm. you know like to hear the sounds of their own voices <laughs> and you know it's it's difficult to tell you to do as opposed to teach you as opposed to build you up as they go along so i think that for me those are the key things that just change the perspective of how women do things we we're really we're very cerebral about mm. these things well mm. for me i would say that yes women are natural managers like by the time you manage a home <laughs> and manage maybe not even a home from when you're young you're trained to be a manager the man or the boy child can be liberal to a certain extent but you're trained to manage this one watch the food while you're cleaning the house watch the food in the kitchen remember to do this remember to do that so that ability to multitask i think Putting it together just plays out in the work environment because um, there are, women have this balance of emotions and being logical. And that's why most times when you see a man who is managing a workplace, they're usually very logical and they can't connect to the emotional side of people. So when it comes to emotional intelligence, women thrive more. And we are looking at today's world. We need more people with emotional intelligence to handle people because there's just too much diversity. Logic doesn't cut it anymore. So <laughs> when you put a woman in a leadership position, she has that right balance to handle uh, things. And yeah, uh, in addition to what Uti said, I think that's why um, yeah. women thrive more in, in leadership positions these days. Okay, that's interesting <laughs> because um, just funny, funny, funny thoughts that I had. For, I mean, we've been running ways now for over a year plus, and I mean, with every guest, something very interesting happens, especially mm. when you have all those kind of, you know, those guests, mm. <laughs> you know, whenever we send email, it's okay, it's a team of women and all of that. I think maybe somewhere at the back of your mind, 
they just there's this um mindset. Uh, mindset that they have just you know fluffy yeah <laughs> just think about women then all of a sudden when the show goes live and they're done with the conversation they keep going oh my god oh this was fantastic uh, you grilled this, me this, this, that. <laughs> you know so, so i'm wondering okay so what were you thinking mm. you know were you thinking that because we were women right it meant mm. that we did not have the mental capacity yeah. to be able to handle the, conversa the conversations, conversations you know that are required. you know nation building those kind mm -hmm. of nation building conversations or what were you thinking you know so i mean that for me got me thinking that is it possible that this is also what has happened you know generally across nigeria where it seems like for every single time a woman wants to come out for a leadership role Maybe she's just seen like that. That's the first judgment that is placed on her. And all of a sudden, they start to give you, you know, those kind of, you know, uh, oh yeah, come and mm -hmm. take deputy governor, come and take this, yeah, come and take that, somewhere. you know, and make sure you just, you're just somewhere. Let it not look like, because they say, oh, 30% representation. So let's just find something to, is that what we are seeing in the political scene, for instance? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll let Sandy. Okay, well, for me, I think I have a contrary opinion, because mm -hmm. when you give a woman, take the, deputy or something it's it's i look at it from two angles right okay. most women are not prepared for leadership positions like a lot of people just started realizing oh i can do this i can do this but the fact that i can do this doesn't mean that you are you are ready for it you need to go through tutorship through training and through certain things mm -hmm. so when they put you in um maybe a deputy assistant or assistant producer or system manager or something i think it is something that we are grateful for because that gives you an avenue to um um on the study and then grow into maybe taking the leadership position so i don't think that's a problem where it is a problem is where you are qualified to be the person at the top and you are denied it because of gender that's where i have a problem yeah mm. so i do <laughs> hmm. do i agree that i certainly agree that it's changing over time mm -hmm. and more women are realizing that leadership is a real possibility more women now expect to progress in their careers they expect you know the glass ceiling now um at least within corporate nigeria the glass ceiling is something yeah. that is yes is being shattered and women have increasing um opportunities i think that that mindset that women can't lead um i think that is in itself is almost like old school now because i think all of us who are in in you know that age of working now mm -hmm. you can't help but accept that you know you will be leadership even when representation is low because it is still low yes you know, it is it's still it's low true. in a lot of companies but i think that every young woman today at least maybe from your 20s no in fact maybe 40s as as, as much as your 40s or your 50s you've seen at least one or two strong women we've had a, a, a sizable period of time where we started to have strong you know female leaders i mean i remember being a child and margaret Th um, thatcher being the prime minister mm -hmm. of the uk you know and even at that time she was called the iron lady mm -hmm. oh yeah I you know and because of who she was now if it was a man that had the same they i mean not call him churchill the iron man. and the rest of them worse but <laughs> not called iron man no but because <laughs> she was who she was, and that was, of course, not at par with what you expect for women, women, then it's Iron Lady. And that then brings me to that thing of whether you're assertive versus you're being aggressive, mm. because that's always a, a challenge you uh. find in the corporate world. It's like, oh, when you speak your mind, then you're, you're almost, you're aggressive, you're borderline, you know, rude. Mm. I'm like, no, I, I just have a point to make and I'm making my point. If a man was making this point, would we, which man has ever been tagged? In fact, you're encouraged as a man mm. to be aggressive. Die, right. You're a man. Exactly. So I think, man. you know, this really does affect me mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm kind of aggressive when I'm trying to make assertive, my point. Assertive, rather, you mean? Uh, uh, well, assertive, but it is interpreted as being aggressive. aggressive. Yeah. So I'm trying to make my point and I'm being passionate about it. I'm like, stop being aggressive. I'm like, what? Yeah. How, where, where did that come from? I'm just being like firm. I think that's the word I would it's rather even, use. For I'm me, it's even firm. passion because what happens to me is when I'm trying to make a point, my volume goes up. I'm very expressive. Exactly. My face is yes. moving. And you can see, and I'm like, mm. and people just go, Calm like, down. Calm down. Mm. Like, but I'm calm. I'm calm. I'm happy. <laughs> exactly. I'm calm. If you would just see my point, I like literally I'm chilled. Mm -hmm. 
but, but so so these are some of the things that we go through. But there was something mm. Oti said when you had your opening line. And I remember attending one of these Wimby's conferences where then I think she was the commissioner for finance in Ogun State. And she was called up to nominate who she thought could make a minister for finance. You know, she gave a long list. And the person she submitted the names to, she was narrating her story. And the person she submitted her names to, I said, uh -uh. Where's your name? why did you put all these people's name and your name is not on Your name should be number one on the list. And this is the story we see with men. If a man is given an opportunity, they say bring ten names. Number if he could, he'll put number, number one, one his, his name. name. Number two That's his true. name. Number three his name. Then he cannot put the other names, you know. So you have that option of, you know, women we are very, very um you don't want to be seen as rich. Yes, you don't want to be seen like oh you're you're trying to be mm. whatever. You know, but we now know that we play a major role in terms of I mean transformational leadership, right? Because for everything that a woman I have seen you know, lately, especially in recent times that they have nurtured, you've seen progressive growth. Now you were giving us the list of the women, you know, across um, the world the that countries. handled, you know, the countries that mm -hmm. handled, they said that the statistics showed that the countries that handled the COVID-19 pandemic better we're led by, were led by women. Yeah. So if we know the statistics and we know that these numbers are there, why, why are, we, yes, why are we not... Why are we moving. still reluctant to let Yes, why are we not in? moving to, towards that direction? Are we now ready to say, okay, you know, because the truth is, if you put nation above self, mm -hmm. you would know that you whoever is the best man, when I say man now, is both mean, gender, yeah. for the job, why don't we push for those people to be in, in those positions? I think to a large extent, you are still dealing with the male ego. You know, yeah, a lot of people who would go like, I mean, I, I acknowledge the fact that there are some men who have, you know, assisted women and helped to push them up, who believe in, like, women's capability, but majorly we are still fighting uh, patriarchy, that feeling of, you know, I can't be ruled by a woman or women don't understand what they are doing or they belong in the home. Well, at least I, I don't know about other parts of the world, but I can say for Africa, majorly, we still have that um, limiting mindset about women. So I think that's possibly one of the causes. I think it's also still very much a boys club. Um, the game of politics here, at least in Nigeria, is not the cleanest of games. Um, it's not based on merit. It's not based on, you know, we still have kingmakers. We still, that entire process, right, still exists here. And it drives the system largely. Mm -hmm. Now, how many of those men are going to get behind a woman? Which is why it's easier to have a female deputy governor because we find somebody who we think okay she's somewhere in the ranks she's okay we can just put her up onto this role but we don't have an active push for women in politics most of the women who are active card carry members of parties they do background work they do the admin work they keep things mm. running but how many women are at the forefront of these political parties it's still very much a boys club. Mm. So if you, if you even think about where they will meet, the kind of places and the kinds of things that a woman would, would be out to play. Well, you know what, can I play the devil's advocate a little bit? So if you're put in the background where you're you know, just running things and all that, and you're good at that, shouldn't you be okay there? Like if I'm in administration, I'm not the person in the front line, I'm not the president or the vice president or the senator or all that. I'm just somewhere Making down. things happen exactly. behind the scene. Isn't I, that? Shouldn't I be happy I with that, that if I'm if if I'm good at it? Okay, so if I'm if that is my job and I'm perfectly doing it well mm -hmm. behind the scene, right? I can only be content with that if the people at the front end is make they, uh, they are making my job look good. All the hard work that I am putting in behind the scenes. Okay. If I'm seeing results, mm -hmm. do you understand? I'll be content being behind the scenes. Do you understand? But if you're not seeing the Now, the dissatisfaction will be that after all the hard work that mm -hmm. I am putting behind the scenes, the output is not happening. Do you understand? It's just like, for instance, we're running a show now. Mm -hmm. If the production guys at the back end trying to make sure that the camera angles, the lighting, everything is good, and we're now speaking nonsense, what do you think will happen to them? 
right. But that they'll just yank you off. But they would, they would <laughs> yank me off, but that doesn't mean they would come and take over the job as much as they would want to do something better, but they won't come and take over the job. They'll get somebody else to do the job. But, all right. But okay. so for me, I if the decision is within their power. So yeah. so remember like what I even said um, at, at the beginning of the show. I think it's just down to choice. Mm. If your choice is to always be on the back benches and you attain the highest level at the back benches, the choice is for you to stay there. But if you are there and you mm. have excelled and you have said, you know what, I'm going to excel in this role because I want somebody to see that I've excelled and give me the opportunity to be at the front. And then you're not given that opportunity because you're a female then it's a problem. So again, for me, like I said, the right to choose is what is most important. Right. Whatever it is that I'm doing, I want to be... The one that took that decision. Yes, mm -hmm. I took the decision as opposed to the decision being taken for me because of my gender. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's, everybody's different, which is why I say, when I see people saying, how can she just be a housewife? Or how can she just be happy to... It is her decision. Like, it's her choice. In fact, uh, this Abuja that I went to, I didn't even give you people gist. <laughs> I have one madam that is Correct, Milonia, Madame, hustling, do 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 do. Mm. Auntie just married somebody, else. and now I could not believe my eyes She's how not. domesticated she was. She invited me over to her house that she wanted to fry a cara for me and oh, everything. Wow. I said, really? Ah. So she was frying a cara. I thought it was maybe she would get her, na mm -hmm. her maid. Or she right before my very before, she blended the beans, mixed it, did everything, fried the cara, served me. Then the afternoon, she was already calling me, oh, there's white soup and pounded yam. She taught me how to roll the pounded yam with them, um, the way they do in, a, in hotel. Wow. I mean, so every meal that a hobby eats comes from the home. Mm -hmm. This is somebody, if you know this person I'm talking to, talking about, 5 a.m., she's out of the house. She doesn't come back home 11 because she's busy working, making sure she's making the money. Mm -hmm. She was that busy. But you see, when I tell men sometimes... If you want me to hang my hand as princess, no problem. No, but the thing is, even, even when <laughs> no, you choose you know to what? be a housewife, you're not hanging no, but, but your hand. On. She's busy. Well, let me She's even working. explain to you something. What I'm even, where I'm even going with this is that mm. now she chose to, do to right. become a domesticated wife to her husband, mm -hmm. right? It is her choice. Tomorrow, if she's tired, she should be given that liberty to say, you know what, I will get a maid something. to do all of these things and I want to go back to my busy life. Right. That's what I hear what he's saying. Yep. And that is and the decision a lot of women do not have, you the know, when it comes to, to you right. know, yeah. yeah, because once a man sees you, you know, the next thing he's thinking is, I'm hungry. Right? Like you're supposed to be like, going I'm to home and why are you not home? Do you understand? Like, where are you? Those kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. But we're going to go on a break now. When we return, we'll open the phone lines. Then we'll talk about the role of mentorship, right? And Sanzi mentioned something about preparedness, you know, in terms of leadership. So mm -hmm. how do we get ourselves prepared for that, the role of mentorship? Then now we're going to answer the question we've been asking. Towards this 2023, because I saw um, a comp um, an organization that are de raising huge funds to be able to back women in political roles, you know, in Nigeria come 2023, mm -hmm. right? So why do we need to have women in those political roles? We need to answer that question before we end the show today. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. We'll be right back.